futurism. Futurism gets a bit of a bad rep in some circles, and not without good reason, because a lot of what's said is just bollocks. People like Ray Kurzweil saying people will be writing genomes like Shakespeare wrote sonnets doesn't really help matters. I prefer the term future scenarios planning and idea exploration. Alvin Toffler, too much change in too short period of time. Um, there's two types of future shock that we can leverage, and that's type A, which is new technology that's getting introduced, and type B, existing technologies that are becoming distributed and normalised to a population over time as they spread. A really good example of this is the escalator. So type A, it's the Italian futurist of the 1920s, it's dynamism and bodies in motion, it's the escalator is going to change the world. And then there's type B on the right. The Travelator. This is a normalised technology where people can move horizontally across space um, and I think it's pretty incredible. This happened to me a couple of weeks ago now and it's a really good example of type B futurism. I mean, we're growing up in a world where children think it's completely normal to have shoes with wheels. What happens when they become adults and they say, what do you mean I have to walk around Tesco's, I have to walk around Sainsbury's? So that's what I want to talk about, type B futurism and cheap gadgets in the developing world. This is an image from Oxfam. Uh, it's a marketing image and it's fairly typical of the kind of images that we uh, associate with the idea of cheap gadgets in the third world. It's brightly coloured, it's a really good story being told right there. Um, by 2020 there's going to be 3 billion new people on the internet. A lot of these people will be connecting to the internet via distributed telecom telecommunication structures. Uh, they're going to be on their cheap gadgets. They're going to be on their cheap cell phones. Three billion new people is an incredible amount of people in a very short time. But how cheap are these devices? This is Sunit, and he is the CEO of a Indian company called Datawind in India. Uh, He's holding a device called the Akash 2, which has an A8 Cortex processor, it's got 4 gig hard drive space. The main thing is basically a, an iPad 1. Well, the answer is, it's £27 per unit. And by the end of this month, the Indian government is expected to sign off on 5 million units. And the reason is, is because it costs $13 to send textbooks to a student per year. Um, and it's cheaper just to send them new tablets. So what does the West think about all of this? Well, Silicon Valley seems to think that 3 billion new customers, 3 billion new consumers is a really great thing. They see, however, the problem is that they see it as a one-way money extraction operation. They want to expand into these markets. But what are people going to do when they join the internet with their smartphones? Well, they're going to do the same thing as us. They're going to join social networks. They're going to start posting pictures of their cats. They're going to start posting pictures of their dimmer. They're going to show us their everyday lived experience. And that's crucial. They're going to be sharing their everyday lived experience. The thing, however, in traditional media is that the everyday lived experience of the developing world has been artificially kept behind this banner. This viewer discretion is advised tag on the news. What do you mean, Mr. BBC man? You don't want me to see the everyday lived experience of someone else in the, in the world. This is a picture of the Battle of Baghdad in 2003, so 10 years ago. And it's fairly typical of our idea of airstrikes in the Middle East. Each one of these glowing each one of these glowing flashes are fires from airstrikes that have been, that were that struck the city. The thing about now, 10 years later, and this is an image from Gaza just before Christmas, is that each one of those airstrikes is now a twit pick like this. Hugh wrote a really good piece on the IDF uh, and their social media propaganda strategies. But what I thought was really important is that this is happening and we can now see the victims in real time. So 1 billion camera phones were sold in 2011 and there's 1 billion smartphones as of Q4 in 2012. This is a huge number. So what I wanted to do is just quickly talk about the, you know, what have we been doing with these technologies that have been around since 2008? And the answer is, it's been pretty crazy, right? When you think about it, all of these crazy things that have happened to us um, that we've just it's become completely normalized. You know, I'll show you a picture of the future and it's a cop stamping in a protester's face from 3,000 miles away on live stream. 
The question I guess I really want to raise is what is going to happen when all of these people come online? Because they're going to be joining the network, they're going to be sharing that space with us. And as Paul says, there's no bubble bath and candles in a send and receive relationship. Are we ready as a culture to see these things are being, that are being shared? All of these images on the left were taking on, taken on smartphones or camera phones. You know, it's, it's Gaddafi, it's Abu Ghraib. But what's really important for me, I think, is this image on the right, and it's the links. Do we really want to click these links? Do we really want to see where they go? Because that's the, the question that I'm really asking is, as these people come online, are we ready to click on a link and be transported across the network to the li everyday lived experience of someone else in the world? Because it's not really something that we've really had to face before. It's, it's our imperial her heritage here in the developed world. I mean, are we ready to face it? This is an image of three condemned men in Nigeria that was posted recently. Are we ready for the live streams from genocides? Are we ready for the live blogs from refugee camps? Are we ready for the twit pics from famines? Are we all culturally ready for this? What sort of impact is it going to have on us and our politics? Back to this image, this, this marketed image of a man with his new technology in the developing world. Well, the Maasai have a 15% infant mortality rate and really high HIV infection rates. So whilst he's Whilst we're looking at a picture of a man with his new phone, he's probably tweeting us a picture of his dead baby. Thanks.